It's war time. It's war time. Gather the troops, yeah. It's war time. The Most High is gonna have mercy on you, Black. Especially as Americans, if you return back to Him. It's war time. It's war time. We have it's guys on this time. earth, we have guys chosen people. Hit the block, yeah, it's war time. Calling all Jews. Blood in your veins. Yeah. It's the same that was in Christ's veins. You say that don't matter? Time's me, yeah. It's our job as the watchmen to warn our people. Wake up from the lies that you're in. We must return as the Israelites, because that's who we are. You are now tuned in to Wartime Radio Show. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Hey, welcome to WPJM 800. Hey, we're Israel United in Christ, the mighty IUIC. And my name is Officer Yuanathan. And to my left, Officer Kalaya. And to my right, Officer Yuanathan Kassar. Hey, all praises. Hey, today we're going to be bringing out who are the real children of Israel? Who are God's chosen people? And we're going to start off today with 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. It says perilous times. We're talking about dangerous times. And today for the so-called black man, we are in dangerous times. Hey, we are in those days. Give me uh, ch uh, chapter 4, verse uh, start off 3. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heat to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Read that again. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The, the sound doctrine is the words of this Bible. The Most High gave us commands to follow, and it says our people will not, ins will not follow sound doctrine. So we must be doing our own thing in these last days. That's why perilous times have come, because we have forsaken the way of God. Continue. But after their own lust. After their own what? After their own lust. Read. Shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Hey, itching ears. You know what our people love to have? They want to hear money. They want to hear how much blessings they got in their life. Financial blessings. Not blessings that will get us into the kingdom, but they seeking Teachers that will tell them how they can get paid. How can they get rich? Read. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They shall do what? Turn away their ears from the truth. Our people have turned their ears away from the truth. The, the truth has been evil spoken of in these last days. Because of the prophets of God are going out to the people and the people are rejecting the truth. Do we not hear that every day as we go out? Right. Right. All the time. Um, and what you're bringing out is real heavy, officer. Um... What our people have to realize in these last days is, is that they are the children of Israel and that their nationality has been taken from them. That's why we so easily go by a uh, black man or Hispanic man or Native American man. Um, if I can, let me get uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Bring it out. Because these are the last days as the brothers bring it out. And our people need to realize that the, the reason these things are happening to us, the reason we're shot down in the streets, the reason why we're the last hired, the reason why we're the first fired is because the most high hand is against us. We don't see these things happening to all nations over the planet Earth. We see this predominantly happening to our people, but we must realize who we are and what is taking place spiritually on this earth. Read what you got. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So the scriptures are telling us here, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, meaning this is not a physical fight. This fight, that this war that we're going through, as you heard the name of, of the radio show is wartime, this, this fight is not a physical fight, but yet we're still robbing each other. We're still killing each other. We're still being evil towards each other in these last days. The scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, read. But against principalities. But against principalities, things that are set up above us, things that are, are beyond our average everyday thinking, this is what we're wrestling against, read. Against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Why? Because it's the rulers of this world who have these different traps set up for our people that we have been continuously falling in for the last few hundred years. And we got to realize that we are the children of Israel. We are the children of God. We must come back to keeping God's commandments. Hey, all praises, all praises. Hey, go back to uh, 2 Timothy 4 and verse 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. And they shall turn away from their ear. 
They should turn away their ears from the truth. They say they, the Bible says we will turn our ears away from the truth. And the one thing about our people is they never ask what is the truth. Right. Because they think their pastors done told them the truth. Their grandma done told them the truth. Right. But we're going to find out what the truth is today. Yes, sir. Give me that song. Bring it out. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. We're going to find out what the truth is today. You know what they say. You should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Right. Bring it out. Hey, let's hear the truth. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Uh -huh. God's righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. The what? Thy law is the truth. The law is the truth. Right. Our praises. The law is the truth. And you know what our people say? The law is done away with. Right. That's what they've been taught. They've been taught that the laws are done away with. But who gave us the laws? Right. Who gave us these laws? You understand? Right. And then also, when you, when you look at it, when you go back to Tim, 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 for a second. Because he said they're going to they're gonna turn their ears away from the truth. Right? Read that real quick. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Said when they will not endure sound doctrine. When you look up the word endure, that means to suffer something painful or difficult patiently. And that sound doctrine, get Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. What is the doctrine that our people are not going to endure? Because it, it, it takes discipline. We have to. We all have to come back and discipline ourselves to the Most High's laws, the truth, like the officer was bringing out. Get Proverbs four, verse two. Proverbs chapter four, verse two. For I give you good doctrine. The Most High God gave us good doctrine, sound doctrine. Go ahead. Forsake ye not my law. He told the children of Israel not to forsake His laws, like the officer was bringing out. Get Sirach chapter nineteen, verse nineteen. Still dealing with that doctrine, real quick, and we will get back to officer. Bring it out. The book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 19. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. That's the doctrine of life. Keep my commandments and live. Right now we're all in a dead state because we're losing the war that is against our souls. We're losing the war that our enemies has waged against us through because of our own disobedience to God's laws. Read on. And they that do those things. Do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That's what we're that's what we're waiting for as a people. So knowing that we're Israel and coming back to the most highest doctrine, that sound doctrine is what's going to give us that tree of immortality. It's going to give us that kingdom of heaven and bring us back to life. Go ahead, officer. Hey, read that last part again. Read it out. Sirach chapter 19, verse 19, the last part. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. And they that do things that please him. Our job is to please the most high God by doing what? Keeping his commandments. Go to Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. Because, you know, our people say they love God. They love Christ. Right. But if we're not doing things to please him, hey, we didn't say it. The most high said it. That's right. Read that. The book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye children of Israel. You who? Ye children of Israel. Hey, let me say it again. You children of Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. Hey, what's been hidden from you is that you are the children of Israel. Right. You are God's chosen people. That's right. Read. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The Most High has a problem with you. Why? Because there is no truth. There's no what? No truth. Guess what? We just told you that the truth was God's laws. And he says there's no truth where? Read. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. There's no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. But I thought we was all serving God. Right. I thought we all know Jesus in our heart. Mm -hmm. But God is telling us that we don't know him. Right. We don't know the truth. And so somebody's must be lying. That's it. Yeah, somebody is lying. Somebody's definitely lying. Somebody's telling a lie. And we got to find out point blank where that lie is coming from. Hold that where you at and give me first John chapter two, verse three. Because hey, I want to find out who's lying. Is it our pastor's lying? Is our mama's and grandma's lying? Because they've been saying they know God. They love God. That God is in their heart. But God said there's no knowledge of God. So somebody got to be telling the lie. Is this Bible the truth or are our people the truth? Read. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. 
and hereby we do know that we know him uh -huh. if we keep his commandments. So we know God by doing what? If we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. That's a big word. If we keep his commandments. Read. Read it out. Verse 4. He that saith I know him and keep of not his commandments is a liar. Is it what? Is a liar. If you're not keeping the most high's commandments, you are a what? A liar. A liar. Read. And the truth is not in him. The truth is not in you if you are not keeping God's laws. So let me ask you, did you ever learn the uh, commandments in church? No, never learned the commandments. Never oh. learned. I, we, 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 we learned or we heard the commandments, but we never knew how to apply the commandments. We would hear the Ten Commandments, never knew how to, never knew how to apply them or how they applied to us as a people versus the whole world. What about you, brother? Did you ever learn the commandments? No, sir. You know what? I never even heard about the commandments. <laughs> I heard about what happened if you went out to the club last night. Who does that? I heard about if you was hoeing. But I didn't hear about how to live righteously. How to live according to God. Go back to Hosea 4 and 1. Bring it out. Because there's got to be a result of not keeping God's commandments on this earth. Because that's our father. And I don't know about y'all, but when I grew up, not listening to your father, not listening to your parents, there was a severe punishment. It wasn't a tap on the shoulder and say, you know what, it'll be all right. I, I knew it wasn't all right. Hey, nowadays, nowadays, they just take the video games from them. Yeah, right, right. They take the video games, tell them to go in the room. Right. So they can be on the computer and watch porn. Right, right. <laughs> That's what they do. Right. Read. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Mm -hmm. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Read. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Read. Verse 2. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touch of blood. If I didn't know better, I swear that was black on black crime. That's what happens by not keeping God's law. Message. We start killing. Woo. We start committing adultery, right? Fornication. We start committing what sin, right, bro? And our people glorify that, like all the things written in Hosea four one. We glorify that in our music. The, the the rappers make song about sleeping with another brother's girl or wife. The women say, "I'll take your man." That's adultery. We rap rap about murdering our own people, right? No mercy. That nigga step on my foot. I'm gonna blast them. All those. That's Israel right there. If you can't see that this is talking about the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans just by that verse, then um, you know, you still have some more more reading to do. Right, and it falls it it, it falls all the way back to what I just pulled right. But everything that you just said lined up with uh, Ephesians six and twelve again. If you want to read that one more time, because read read first read that 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 bottom precept that you just read in Hosea. Read that again. Read it out real quick so that we can show the people there's a reason why. Uh, these things are happening to us, and we here on, on war on, on, on wartime radio, we have the solutions that our people have never heard here in America before. Woo! We have the solutions written out of the same Bible that your grandmother has, that mother has, has been sitting on their coffee table for the last 25, 30 years, and nobody has ever read it or got the proper understanding of what these scriptures are talking about in reference to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read right. that in Hosea again. Hosea chapter 4, verse 2. By swearing and lying and killing. And what? And killing. Read again. By swearing and lying and killing. Read on. And stealing uh -huh. and committing adultery, they break out and blood touch of blood. Blood touch of blood, like the brother just said, like the officer just said, that's black on black crime. Now jump over to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Read it out. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is not a flesh and blood fight. But we are constantly killing each other, trying to be better than each other, trying to, you know, uh, uh, outshine each other right in our own neighborhoods when we should be building each other up and learning what is necessary for us to build as a community. What is necessary for us to grow into the gods on this earth that we are made to be in? Read it again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on. But against principalities, uh -huh. against powers, uh -huh. against the rulers of darkness of this world, Read. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Come on. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So the scriptures is telling us we got to put on the armor of God. Going all the way back to what is the truth, like the officer brought out. What is the truth? The armor of God is the truth, which is these laws. Go ahead, officer. Hey, you know, the one thing about this is that we're supposed to keep God's laws. But you know what our people say? We don't have to because we're not the Jews. Right. That's their claim. They claim they're Gentiles. Hey, you know what one of my one of my old uh, classmates told me uh, about a week ago? He didn't say it to me. He wrote it after I made a post, right? He wrote on his Facebook page, y'all better stop believing uh, something that an old man wrote in a book over 500, over over 5,000 years ago. Our what? People, our people are bugged out, man. Bugged out they mind. Because I'm going to tell you something. This Bible is our history book. Right. This is our book. It's not a religious book. It's a history book of our forefathers. That's right. Every nation on this earth has a history. And we think our history began coming off the slave ship. Right. But we have a great history. And our history date back to the greatest people to ever walk this earth. From Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to Judah to Benjamin to Levi to Jesus Christ. Those are our people. Not everyone's, but the children of Israel. And the one thing about this Bible, hey, we can prove all things with it. Right. That's right. And you know what? It's not another nation can bring this Bible out like the children of Israel. And today, guess what? It's a war against you to keep you from the knowledge of this book. Exactly. Go to Psalms 83. Because hey, you know what? Our people think that, hey, the war is against their own people. Right. You know, against poo-poo down the street. <laughs> And don't realize that our enemies are brought us over here on these slave ships. And our enemies don't want you to know that you're the children of Israel. They don't want you to know that you're God's chosen people. Message. That you are the greatest people that walk the earth. They want you to think you the N-word. You know what I'm saying? That you spicks. Right. They don't want you to know that you are the Israelites. Read, it Read Psalms 82. Start at verse 2. Psalms chapter 83, verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So God has enemies, not friends, not people that love him, but enemies, read. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And they make it quite clear that they hate God. Because I'm going to tell you, if they didn't hate God, they would actually follow his commandments. They would actually keep his feast days. That's right. You know, things like the Passover, first fruits, feast on living bread. Did you learn those things, brother, coming up? No, sir. What about you? No, sir. And, and real quick, but I don't want to cut your train of thought. I was crazy is before I got here, you know, we just celebrated Passover uh, uh, the week before last. And I was uh, I was at the store, actually, here in Columbia. We celebrated the Passover in Orlando. And, you know, got on, got on our shirts. I was at the store, and I was on the way. I was about to leave. And uh, so I'm purchasing something from, uh, you know, other nations, uh, as usual. Right. And you know what he says? He looks at the shirt. He says, hey, y'all was in Orlando? Like a, a, a week and a half ago, mm -hmm. I'm late. He was like, man, y'all was deep. What was that about? You know, you know I, I didn't give him all the details, but it shows you that they recognize, this happened in Orlando. He saw us in Orlando, but he automatically recognized, oh, they, they, these are some of the, this is somebody from that organization, right. from that group of people that were, that I saw down in Orlando. So this truth is spreading across the globe and other nations see it and our people see it, but they are constantly rejecting the words that are coming out of this Bible, rejecting the words that we're that we're trying to convey to them, just like they did during Noah's time. Because you know why? Because our enemies are not telling it. Right. Our right. enemies are not celebrating right. these things. Right. And they don't want to hear from their own people. Exactly. So when we say we love one another, you know, I love I love everybody. We gotta first start hey, learning to love our own people, mm -hmm. learning to trust our own people, the leaders of our people. And right now, I'm gonna tell you the truth. That the only true leaders on this earth that I see walking are the members of IUIC. Because they're out there on these streets every single day, 365 days a year, putting in work to wake our people up and bring them back to their nationality to uplift them out of the conditions they're in. That's right. Now, hey, start it from the top again. Read. Psalms chapter 83, verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Uh-huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Crafty counsel against our people. You know, in the in the lamest words, they've been plotting. Right. You know, they, they've been plotting. They holding secret meetings. They done devised a plan against our people. Not to uplift our people because your enemies don't do anything to uplift you. Their job is to keep their foot on your neck. And keep in mind, as the so-called black, 
blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we still in the same position when we came off that slave ship right. at the bottom. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. We the hidden ones. We the ones that don't know that we are the Israelites. We're walking around calling ourselves African Americans, Puerto Rican, Indian, Mexican, Cubans. We don't know that we are the children of Israel. Read. Verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us cut them off from being a nation. That's what they don't understand. Our enemies have cut us off and been a nation. They done divided and conquered us. And so now when we ask our people, what is their nationality? Hey, they have no clue. And guess what? Your enemies know that, that you are awakening up across this globe and they are passing laws. Hey, they're calling you a identity extremist for learning your nationality. Right. They're right. passing laws to keep you from learning who you are. Think about that. They want to take away your name. They don't want you to have your name come back because they love to see you walk around with the name of Smith, Johnson, Williams, you know, property of Mr. Smith, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Williams. That's what you are, property. So whenever you think that you're free, ask yourself, where did you get your last name? Right. Ask yourself, who gave it to you? And ask yourself, why do you still have it if you're free? Because to be free, you must have your own land, your own laws, your own government. And right now, we don't even have our own neighborhood, let alone have all these things. Right, right. And hey, give me, hey, real quick, give me Psalms chapter 49, verse 11. Because what you just said is heavy. That they, they, they keep us in this darkness. They keep our people blinded by te with, with television, with social media. You notice there's a new app that comes out every thing on every 18 months or something like that. At one point, there was a time where they said that technology increases every 18 months. That was years ago. Now, it increases at a speed of about every three to four months. There's something new coming out to keep our people's minds busy with social media, like you said, so that they can continue their rulership, so that they continue their plan to, to, to keep us on the bottom. But thus says the Lord that that's not going to happen. But read, read what you got in Psalms real quick. Psalms chapter 49, verse 11. Uh -huh. The inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. That's what you just said. Their inward thought is that their houses will continue forever. So if that is their inward thought, what is going to be their plan of action? Their plan of action is going to be to keep the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans' minds and, and, and days occupied within the a realm of, of influence that they control in order for us to stay in that box. They want to keep us in that box. So they keep they put us in this box and they continually throw different types of entertainment in that box in hopes that we never crawl out of that box and realize that we're the children of God. Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. Uh-huh. Read. They call their lands. They call what? They call their lands uh -huh. after their own names. America. That's why you got black men today walking around saying, I'm an American. Right. I'm an I'm an African American. But who was America named after? Americo Vespucci. <laughs> and you ask them, do you know who Americo Vespucci is? Uh, no. But you're an American, though. Right. It's an Italian explorer. I, 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 when did the Negroes become Italian? I don't never remember Negroes being Italian. They, 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 they claim to be a American. You know, matter of fact, African American. Right. As if mm -hmm. that says something better. Right. But what was Africa named after? Um, uh, Afri Africanus, Leo Scipio Africanus. Uh, another what? Another so-called uh, white man. Another so-called white man. So-called, because guess what? Just like we have a biblical name, he has a biblical name. And his biblical name is Esau or Edom. And they tried to hide that fact. But guess what? The Negroes can read today. It's 2021, and guess what? We excel in reading. Right. That's right. And guess what? We excel in reading, we're going to excel in knowledge. And just like you said, it's time for us to come out of this gross darkness, because guess what? We've been there too long. And if you don't think we've been there too long, give me Isaiah chapter uh, 60, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people you know what? That darkness is sin. Say, sin shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Because our people is in gross darkness. Mm -hmm. They have no clue who they are. Our women are uh, running around, calling, proud to be a thought. Who does that? Proud to walk around half naked. 
calling themselves bad bees. Right, right. I mean, who raised you? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Who raised you? Because I'm sure your grandma didn't uh, dress that way. Exactly. Some of your mamas might be dressing that way. <laughs> right. Because, you know, our people is in gross darkness. They have no idea how to walk in righteousness. Continue. For behold, the people... For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Guess what? The glory is being seen on who? The Israelites. Right. The Israelites who have forsaken sin return back to the Most High's laws. And like I said before, our people don't think the laws pertain to them because they don't think that they are the real Jews. But let's prove that. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Because like I said, this is our history book. And you know what? If we're going to make that claim to say this is our book, well, we better be able to prove it. And guess what? The prophets are back on earth today to teach you all things. That's right. Read Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. To who? All Israel. So we're establishing the fact that Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. And we're going to take you into the things that happened when Moses spoke to the children. What did he speak to them about? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, Above all nations of the earth. Hey, read it from the top again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass. Meaning this will happen, read. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hearken diligently. Meaning, you know what? I'm going to tell you what to do. You listen and follow it. Read. To observe and to do all his commandments. To do all his what? All his commandments. Let me make something clear to you. A commandment is something God is telling you to do. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's not something that he wants you to think about. It's something he's commanding you to do. No different if your father, your mother commanded you to do something. If you do it, guess what? You shall be rewarded. Read. Bring it out. And to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth? Above all nations of the earth. I thought we was an equal society. Above all nations of the earth. So God wanted to put his children above all the nations of the earth. That only That's makes right. sense. That only makes sense. Because guess what? You want to work hard to give your children things so what? So they can have a better chance in life. You don't want them to be equal. You want to give them better advantages than you had. So Most High gave us something to say here. You follow my laws. You follow my rules. This earth is yours. I'm going to put you above all the nations of the earth. That's right. And you know what? So uh, here goes something very simple. How do you think the other nations felt about it? Give me verse 10. Bring it out. Verse 10. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. They say, hey, them Israel. Hey, them Lord's children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, hey. That's their father. That's their God. And they're going to be what? And they shall be afraid of thee. They're going to be what? Afraid of thee. Because they understand that they don't have a God. You. Their God don't fight for them. So guess what? You want to leave them alone. As long as they're keeping God's laws, you don't want to touch them. You don't want to come near them. Because why? There will be retribution from the Most High. But hey, there's a flip side to keeping God's laws. And what is that flip side? Give me verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Meaning if we be disobedient and we don't want to listen to our father, the same God that we claim that we love, read. To observe to do all his commandments. So if we don't deserve to do all his commandments, what? And his statutes, which I command thee this day. That all these curses... All these what? All these curses... Hey, let me ask y'all brothers something. Have you ever known a curse to be good? No, mm -hmm. sir. Nope. Not one. He said, all these curses shall what? Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said, these curses shall come upon us and overtake us. Give me verse 46. Bring it out. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. He said, these curses shall be upon us for a sign... 
and for a wonder. Uh huh. And upon thy seed forever. So understand something. These curses are going to be on the children of Israel forever. Their children, then their children's children. So this is how you identify who the children of Israel are. These are the people who are God's chosen people. Right. So everybody can't claim to be God's chosen people. Everybody can't claim to be a child of God if the curses don't fit them. That's right. So let's find out some of these curses to find out if all nations fit these curses or do certain people, which are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let's find out if these curses only fit them or does it fit everybody else? Give me verse 16. Verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city. Uh oh. And curse shall thou be in the field. Read it from the top again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Read it Curse shall thou be in the city. Uh-oh. Uh, hey, in the city. Are we in the high rises? Big, beautiful buildings? Uh, no. No? Where we at? Where we at in the city? In the ghetto. In the hood. In the ghetto? <laughs> right. Hey, ain't nothing like the ghetto. We in the ghetto. They done, they done um, put us in a place where they got uh, to control us. And guess what? They send their SWAT teams, their police officers, they send their uh, slave catchers. Right, because that's all they are. That's all they are, the slave catchers. And they come there and they oppress us. They, they shoot us down in the streets. That's how we are oppressed or cursed in the city. Read. And cursed shall thou be in the field. In the what? In the field. You mean the cotton field wasn't a great job? You tell me that the cotton fields, the tobacco plantation fields didn't have a 401k plan? Mm. What happened? Did we, we didn't get rich off of that? Come on now, dog. We work for free. Come on, man. And you know, and they say that um, cotton back during the slavery days was equivalent to how oil is today on the earth. Right. So, so imagine how rich our, the, our enemies gotten off of that free slave labor while we were put to death, just working in the fields. It wasn't right. no, no regular labor. It was from sun up to sun down. Right. We worked in those fields. Man, America became the greatest nation on earth based off the fact that they didn't have to pay a whole race of people. Right. right. For hundreds of years. Right. For hundreds of years. Think about that. For hundreds of years, for over 400 years, you got free labor. That's equivalent to oil today on the earth for cotton? Come on, man. Some of the, 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 they're they're living off of uh their children's children's children are living off of the wealth that was created off of the back the blood and the bones of our people. That's why I said imp it's imperative that we realize that these scriptures are talking about us. Right. Bring out some more of these curses, cause you know what? Maybe they say that's not enough to prove that we the children is. I mean, you know what? And it right here it says and. And cursed shall thou be in the field. You know what our people will argue today? They'll say, well, we ain't in the field no more. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are in the field. You're in the field of technology. Yeah. All right? You're, 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 you're in the field of, of, of fitness like I am. You're in the field of medical. You're in the medical field. Yeah, you go to the they, warehouses, guess who you had? That's the only people I see in there is blacks and Hispanics riding them forklifts. Exactly. You know, busting them boxes down, packing them boxes. Exactly. The field, all it did was change forms. All right, now you're not, we're no longer in the physical field, the cotton field, the tobacco field, sugarcane field, things of that nature. Now these fields are, you think you're free because you actually get to go, wake up in, in, in your house, jump in your car, drive down the street, and then go to the plantation freely, get a paycheck, then go back home, do this five, six days a week, and we think, oh, we free. We's free. Right. We ain't in no field no more. We's right. free now. But then that paycheck, where does that paycheck go to? Remember, the slave masters, they provided housing for the slaves. They provided clothing for the slaves. They had to feed the slaves as well. Oh. So now our people are mind jacked to the point where, okay, we're in the field. We're not in the field anymore. We get, a pay. we get paid for our services now. But every dime you get has to go back to your oppressor. And that's one of the other curses. Right. Every Matt, dime you get. Go ahead, officer. Hey, bring that out. Uh, get me uh, verse 48. Officer, right. break that down. Because what you just said was a mouthful. And guess what? Our people don't realize that, hey, we still serving our slave masters. Right. You're to not, this day. Right, to this not, day. It's not freedom. We wasn't freed off the plantation. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Read it out. 
Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. Right, so the Bible is saying that's one of the curses. You will serve your enemies. You will work for your enemies. Read. Our friends, bro. There's, they got to be our friends because, you know, they, hey, some of them, there's some good white people. Hey, friends don't sell friends into slavery. <laughs> you know what I mean? Friends don't rape your wives and your daughters and your children or, or, your, or your sons. Friends don't 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 tie you to to one arm on a on a on a horse and the other arm on a horse and split you in half. Right. Friends but, don't do that, brother. If I didn't know any better, I swear that was hate speech. Right. Right. No, that the hatred is that that's mind boggling. But that's that's, that's the said the Lord, right? right? Right. They right. don't realize that's what <laughs> that's what God that's the power that God gave him over us for being disobedient to to the laws. That's Most highly, right. he let these things he let these people do this to us. Because of disobedience to, this, to these scriptures. Right. Read that, read that from the top again. Break that down. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, Go ahead. which the Lord shall send against thee. So once we realize that the Most High is doing this to us, and that he allowed those enemies to come after us because of our own disobedience, our breaking of the covenant that we made with the Most High. Read. In hunger. In hunger. So we get up, we work on the, in the field. In the plantation, we get our paycheck. Now we got to go buy food. Who is that money going to? Our enemies. It's not going. It's not recirculating back into our community. Right. It's not. So we have to go to our enemies for food. Go ahead. And in thirst. And in thirst, we have to pay for our water. That is a curse. Jeremiah lamented about that thing in Lamentations. Real quick. Let's get that real quick. Lamentations chapter five. Why, why would you have to lament about buying water? <laughs> because it's freely flowing. Get that Lamentations, what is it, five? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Lamentations chapter five and verse four. Go ahead. We have drunken our water for money. We have drunken <laughs> our water for money. That and he's lamenting about that. That's something that 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 hurts his spirit. Right. That bothers him. Why in the world do we have to drink our water for money? Read. Read it out. Our wood. Is sold unto us. That, that's our wood. The earth, the, everything on all the resources of this earth was created for us. Woo! And we have to pay for our wood. It's sold to us now. But our people say that we're free. Our people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge to the point we think we're free because they now, instead of whipping our backs and giving us slop to eat or to, to set the crumbs on the table, they, they give us a paycheck and allow us to buy our own delicacies, the steak and all those different things, but give that same paycheck right back to them. You you know what's crazy about that is America is the richest planet on earth, mm. a country on earth, and they making you pay for water, <laughs> something that God freely gives you. Freely, freely gives you. Hey, you can't even take a, a bucket outside and collect rainwater in certain states. Right. You can't do that. That's crazy. I mean, this water is to nourish your body. It's a gift from God, and it would have to be an enemy of God to say, "I'm gonna charge you." For that that God gave you free, I'm gonna make you pay for it. Mm. Hey, but watch what watch what watch what he said. Read verse one of uh, Lamentations. Watch what watch what he said. He's trying to remind God of, of, of this thing. Read that. Lamentations chapter five verse one. Remember, O Lord. And he's trying to make the Lord remember. <laughs> the Lord said, "I ain't got to remember. I did this to you on purpose. Right. Right. You caused this on yourself." Read. Read, is, it, read it again. Remember, O Lord. Uh huh. What has come upon us? Uh huh. Consider. And behold our reproach. The reproach is because of us breaking the commandment. The Lord don't need to remember. The Lord said, if you break these commandments, if you keep the commandments, like you read, like the brother read in, in, uh, in Deuteronomy 28 and 1, if you keep the commandments, this is what's going to happen to you. If you break the commandments, this is what's going to happen to you. Now, Jeremiah said what? Read it again. Remember, O Lord. Jeremiah said, please, Lord. Please remember, O Lord. Read. What has come upon us? Uh -huh. Consider. And behold our reproach. Read on. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. The inheritance was the ownership of the whole earth and everything on it. Everybody on it. We had possession of it all. But want to be like a toasty. Turn our backs on most our God. Let me ask you something. It said our inheritance is turned to strangers. Uh -huh. Is the Chinese still in their land? Oh, yeah. What about the Africans? Oh, yeah. The East Indians? Yes. Our inheritance is turned to strangers because we're in someone else's land. Mm. We're being ruled. We're being made to pay for water, pay, uh, pay for uh, food, for shelter, for clothing. Matter of fact, go back to Deuteronomy 28. Finish that verse out. Yes, sir. Bring it out. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. We're serving our enemies, our enemies. We have to keep that in mind. This is warfare like we brought out earlier in the call. How in the world are you at war? You don't know you're at war and you don't know who your enemies are. Right. It doesn't make it. You can't fight a war that way, but read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Go ahead. In hunger. For food. And in thirst. For our water. And in nakedness. Even the clothing that's on our back. You can have your own clothing line, but we don't earn, we don't own the textiles or from that cotton that, that that's being um cultivated and makes the clothes. We don't own that. We still have to pay for that thing. Even if you say I own my own clothing line. And we should get free t shirts right now. <laughs> right. For real. Should be able to walk in Walmart, just pick up a pack of t shirts and walk out. For the rest of our lives. <laughs> right. For the rest of our lives. Read on. And in want of all things. Every single thing that we have to that we have to get, we have to get that from our enemies. Guess what? Religion. We get a nationality from our enemies. We gotta get a drive. If we wanna we buy a car in order for us to drive the car, we gotta pay to get a driver's license to get permission to drive that car. That doesn't make any sense. You have to pay for your own debt. Right. How in the world is debt more expensive than 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 buying lunch? Look, you can't even say you dead without going to them. Right, exactly. Get permission. Say, hey, can I get a certificate? You need a death <laughs> certificate. When you're born, the, the child, they brought it out, the elders brought it out during one of the radio shows or class or something. He said, you're born. And the, the, the baby came out the, the mother's womb. The doctors see it come out the mother's womb. And you still got to get a certificate proving that that's your child. Right. right. He, he, he pulled the child out. <laughs> right. He, he pulled, pulled the child that's out. That's her baby right there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you still got to get a certificate and want the all things read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. But this is the thing that our people right here are so spiritually and mentally traumatized about right here. That yoke of iron. We bring it out at camp. We bring it out in classes. Our people, this is what our people want to reject. That yoke of iron, that slavery, the fact that these atrocities has happened to us. Did any other nation run around having yokes of iron around? No. Matter, when you Google yokes of iron... What color are the people that comes up? That's showing uh, Indian. No, no Indian, no Chinese. I ain't, mm -hmm. I ain't never seen the white man running around with pictures of yolks of iron around their neck. No, but they would claim they would claim that they went through slavery. Mm. They would claim that this happened to us. See, here's the thing: you make it have you have segments of history where uh, you have your, you have the so-called you have Esau. Uh, putting Esau in a, a small captivity. That is not the captivity that this Bible is talking about. This Bible is talking about a whole nation of people, not a group of people, a whole nation of people being taken off, off their land and placed into captivity. That did not happen to anybody else except you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Uh, maybe right. that's still not enough, though. Oh, let, let me finish it off real quick, real quick. Please. And he shall, sorry, he shall put a yoke. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Until when? Until he have destroyed thee. That part there. Until he has destroyed the so-called black Hispanics and Native American. That yoke of iron, it could be symbolic of a, a leash around a dog's neck. Mm -hmm. You have a wild dog running around. You got to put a leash on his neck so that he don't run around biting people, doing all type of crazy stuff, destroying the neighborhood. Once you have that dog tamed, now you can walk the block with that dog by your side. And he's no longer a threat. So you can take, let him walk without the leash. He's not going to bite you. Right, I still don't trust them things, but he's like, hey, he's not going to bite you. Right, right. But you know, we got our people be simple. They say I ain't destroyed. Mm. Right, exactly. They, but they don't understand what that destroyed means. Hey, go to Jeremiah chapter seventeen, verse four. Yeah. Let's find out what destroyed means. Bring it up. Because hey, you know that's we got to understand. There's a war against you. It's a war against you to do what? To destroy the knowledge of who you are. And we got to start admitting the fact that we don't know who we are. We don't know our nationality. We don't know our history. We don't know who our forefathers are. We don't know where we come from. Read. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. We're going to do what? Discontinue from thine heritage. See, we don't even know that we have a strong, rich heritage. Mm -hmm. We don't understand that. That the Most High gave us laws to follow. That's our heritage. He gave us feast days, holy days. And we don't follow anything that's ours. Name one thing we follow that's ours. Mm. Because Halloween's not us. You know what a Negro say? My birthday. That's all they got. <laughs> I follow my birthday. 
That's all they and, got. And, 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 and that is not biblical. That is against the most high God. Right. But we follow 4th of July. Not ours. We was in we was in uh, chains on the 4th of July. Right. But now we celebrate it. And the crazy part is our people acknowledge that this stuff is not ours. They'll exactly. acknowledge that, that Christmas is pagan. They'll acknowledge that Thanksgiving is about the slaughter. But but we celebrate it different. We celebrate it for love and family. Nah, that's not <laughs> our heritage, yo. Right. Read that verse from the top again. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And it happened. Read. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. We'll do what? Serve thine enemies. Boy, we know we that's happening. Every morning that alarm clock goes off at 5 o'clock for me, I know where I'm going mm. to serve my enemies. Right. <laughs> yeah, go in a couple right. hours. <laughs> right. Read. Which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. For how long? Forever. Well, guess what? <laughs> that fire is still burning to date. Mm-hmm. Bright and hot. Right. Because why? We turned our backs against the Most High's laws and commandments. But maybe that's still not enough for the Negro. Mm. Maybe that's still not a, enough proof. Because you know what? Hey, we can make that fit anybody. Well, let's see if this verse fits anybody. Bring it out. Give me verse 68. Bring it out. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, the history of the Israelites were that they walked out of the land of Egypt. Now, the Bible says they're going to bring them back into the land of Egypt by ships. Well, nowhere in the Bible did the Israelites ever go back into the land of Egypt with ships. So let's find out where what that word means. Let's find out what it means to go back into Egypt with ships. Give me that in Exodus 20 and 2. Bring it out. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. Out of the house of bondage. What does the word Egypt means? Out of the house of bondage. Another word for bondage is slavery. That's right. right. So when it says he brought us into the uh, brought us out of the land of Egypt, brought us out of bondage, brought us out of slavery. So let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 68. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Or slavery again with ships. With what? With ships. Hey brother, did we come over here on a uh, nice boat ride? Bro, it, it was not a nice boat. Bro. It wasn't. It wasn't a carnival cruise ship. It wasn't a carnival cruise ship. It was a slave ship. We came over here on these good slave ships, shackled down, and sold like cattle. And you know, mm. our people will admit that they like that. That history, they know. They know that. Well, I say it like this because we've have run across some of these young younger children uh, in twenty twenty one that have no clue. You ask them, how did you get here? They just dumbfounded. Like they don't know what the hell is going on. But our, most of our people will admit that we came here by way of slave ship. Well, if you came here by way of slave ship, what was your nationality before then? Mm. What was the way of life that you lived before then? Obviously, it's not the way that we live now. Now we're in the ghetto. Now we're in the hoods. We will admit that we know that we were once uh, rulers of the earth. But why have we fallen to such a low estate? This is what this show is about. This is what these scriptures are telling us. We went into slavery, into Egypt again to serve as slaves, just like we're still serving today. Right. Read it from the top again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Into slavery again? With ships. Read. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee. Read. Thou shalt see it. No more again. We wouldn't see it no more again. What is that it that we wouldn't see again? Our homeland. And guess what? We love to say Africa is our homeland. But what part of Africa is our homeland? That's the thing that matters. What part of Africa? Because we love to say we Egyptians. Right. That's the only thing they claim. That's the only thing. Out of all the countries in Africa, the only thing we want to claim is Egypt. To this day. Wait, we were slaves in Egypt. (laughs) And God brought us out of Egypt. Right. So let's find out what is our homeland. Read it. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem. But what? But Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Which is above is free. Read. Which is the mother of us all. It's the what? 
the mother of us all. Hey, you blacks and Spanish Native Americans, by now you should be calling yourself Israelites because you have a homeland. It's Jerusalem. That is the motherland. That's where we come from. So when next time somebody asks you where you from, hey, you can let them know that you come from Jerusalem, that you are an Israelite. That's right. And that the whole earth is ours. You know, that right. should be a spit in your face. Once you find out that you are the bloodline that runs in your veins is the holiest blood on earth, that your nationality is so rich, that your heritage is so rich, it should be a spit in your face for somebody to call you black. Right. For somebody to call you African American, for you to accept someone calling you African American after knowing the history of your people and finding out that we are not just black, we're not African American, we we're the children of Israel. You have to really understand what it means to be of the the lineage of the children of Israel. Message. Right, because remember, they took crafty counsel to right. cut your name off. Right. And your name means something. Right. Your name means something. You are a child of God. You are a prince of the power. That's what the word Israel means. Yeah. And so guess what? We're the princes of God. Right. And you want to change. Uh, if you want to accept Smith and Johnson, when you are a child of God, accept your name as being a child of God. Right. That's the first thing to come back to the most high is to come back to who your father called you. Right. That's right. You know, he gave you a name. Don't disgrace his name by taking on somebody else's. Right. Let me go back to verse 68. We'll finish that verse out and then you uh, okay. bring that out. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Read. By the way, wherever I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Our homeland, Jerusalem, read. And there. And there, right here in good old USA. Good old US of A. You shall be sold unto your enemies. Will be what? Sold unto your enemies. Hey, we was on those auction blocks being sold to our enemies. Not our friendemies, right. but our enemies. Read. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. Yes, you so-called black women, you were sold as slaves too. Right. Read. And no man shall buy you. Meaning nobody's going to redeem you out of slavery. Not that nobody's going to buy you as a slave, but no one's going to redeem you out of slavery. What was you bringing out? Hey, let me, uh, this segues, this, this segues perfectly into it because uh, we're going over what has happened to us and what is going to happen to us in the future, right? So we just finished reading of how, how we came into slavery on these slave ships. And yet we have many radio shows brought out by our organization, many, many, many uh, classes taught uh, to our people to help them realize who we are and what we must be doing in these last days. Uh, two scripts real quick. Let me get Hosea 4 and 6 real quick. To show that why 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 Hosea 4 and 6 is showing us that even in these last days, just like it was in the days of Noah, I like using that term because these are the days of Noah again. We're prophesying to our people. We're teaching our people, repent, come back to keeping God's commandments before the day of the Lord. Come back to serving your God before destruction comes to America as it has come to all other kingdoms. And it will come as prophesied by these scriptures. That's right. Read. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That knowledge is God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Come on. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. And we continue to reject the knowledge. A lot of you are going to hear this broadcast, and you're going to reject the knowledge that came out on this broadcast today and go right back to being simple Negroes. Come on. I will also reject thee. So God said, because we reject this knowledge, he's going to reject us. This is why we're constantly shot down in the street. We're the last high first five. We live in the ghettos as we've spoken about in this broadcast. Read on. That thou shalt be no priest to me. So now we're not a priest to the most high God. God, uh, The God of heaven and earth that established heaven and earth for the sake of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. He says, you'll no longer be a priest to me. Read. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Seeing that we've forgotten the law of thy God. But what we're looking at is that knowledge. From there, let me get Isaiah 33 and verse 6 real quick. Bring it out. Isaiah 33 and verse 6. Because this is what's going to uh, help build our community, help us come together at, in one mind and one spirit under the law, statutes, and commandments of God. We've tried everything else. Marching in the streets for years, that hasn't worked. Laying down in the streets over the last few years, every time somebody's been shot down in the street, that hasn't worked. Hands up, justice, no peace, that doesn't work. But what we haven't tried is the keeping of God's laws, statutes, and commandments as a whole, as a nation of people. Read what you got. 
Isaiah chapter 36, 3, verse 6. Come on. And wisdom. And what? And wisdom. Come on. And knowledge. And what? And knowledge Read. shall be the stability of thy times. God says that wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of our times, not a gun. That's this is right. not a physical war. He said wisdom and knowledge of what? His law, statutes, and commandments are going to be the stability of these times. Come on. And strength and of what? And, and, and strength. And it's going to be our strength. Read. Of salvation. Of what? Of salvation. This is what we are at war with. We are at war for the salvation of our people. Come on. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's the treasure. To fear God and to keep his commandments is a treasure. Why? Because that's going to ensure that we inherit the kingdom of God. Message. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. Right now, you know, our people are sitting here probably thinking, man, why they keep harping on keeping the commandments? Keeping the commandments. Because our people don't know what sin is. Because, you know... We are in these conditions. We are in these ghettos. We are in these jails, these prisons being oppressed all because of sin. And one thing I found out talking to our people every single day is they have no idea what sin is because all they know to say is everybody sin. Well, we all sin, brother. Wait, we all born into sin. Mm -hmm. But then I ask them, what, what is sin? Since you claim that we all do it, what is it? And they have no answer. But guess what? The prophets of God are going to give you that answer today. That's give right. me 1 John 3 and 4 read. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Yeah. Whosoever committeth sin. Whoever commits sin. Transgressive also the law. Breaks those laws. Those commandments that God gave us. Read. For sin is the transgression of the laws. For sin is the transgression, the breaking of God's laws. That's what sin is. And so that is the reason why that we constantly harping on keeping the commandments. Because give me Romans 6 and 23. Because our people don't understand that, hey, through sin, we all die. Through sin, we're all, we're, this is the reason why we're in these conditions. If you want to reverse the conditions of our people, if you want to stop black on black crime, if you want to stop single motherhood, you, if you want to stop deadbeat uh, daddies, if you want to change your society, this is how you do it by coming back to God's laws. Read. That's right. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin, the payment for sin, is death. Is what? Is death. Payment for sin is death. The payment for sin is death. And our people don't realize that, hey, that's what you're going to get. That is the reason why we are bringing this message. That is the reason why there's a war. Because you are helping the enemy. You are helping the enemy oppress us. You are helping the enemy keep us at the bottom by committing sin. So we must come back. So, you know, with that being said, I hope that you understand that, hey, Wartime Radio is here to help you turn away from your sins, to show you how to come back to the Most High God. Hey, That's right. So, you know what? We're going to bring out this one last verse. Read Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much. So the disciples thought that uh, this lady was wasting this precious ointment that they could have sold for money to give to the poor. Read. And give it to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she had wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she have poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. So this woman understood that Christ was going to die for the sins of our people. So she was preparing his body for his burial. Read. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. So wherever the gospel, the true gospel of Christ, the true gospel of this Bible, read. There shall also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her. So guess what? You should hear this 
truth, the scripture, every single time that the true gospel of the Bible comes out. And with that, we're going to say Shalom. This has been Wartime Radio. You have been with the prophets of Israel united in Christ. Thank you for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. Follow us on all social media platforms at IUIC Columbia, South Carolina. Join our congregation every Saturday at 4 p.m. Located at 1823 Greg Street, Columbia, South Carolina. For more information, call us at 803-708-4861 at extension 237. Share our show with your friends and family. And thank you again for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.